What is engineering? What is the difference between science and engineering? Everything you were not able to do during the JE preparation years, during the coaching years, the foundation program hopes to rekindle that spirit in you. Uh, how do you think FP prepares the first year students to face the real world? The difference between the real world and MCQs is that the real world doesn't have options. You need to know your basics. When you go into real life, you have to deal with people. You're going to come here. You're going to be spending four years over here in an IIT. A lot of your friends probably didn't get into an IIT. And you're probably proud of the fact that you did and they did. Keep in mind, life doesn't stop. Hey everyone, I am Nerjara Mehta, a B.Tech second year electrical engineering student. And in today's episode of Sunday Spotlight, we have with us Professor Sushobhan Sen, Assistant Professor in Civil Engineering and a member of the Board of Directors in ISCP, that is International Society for Concrete Pavements, that aims to facilitate advancement of knowledge and technology related to concrete pavements through education, technology transfer and research at international level. Apart from this, he has also been one of the coordinators of the foundation program here at IIT Gandhinagar. Now, Professor, uh, the best question to begin this podcast is by asking, what is engineering? Because every time we hear the word engineering, the first thing that comes up to us is the reference given by Bollywood movies. May it be three years ka Amir Khan. So, can you give an explicit example of what is engineering? So, engineering is very simply problem solving. Right? It's solving problems of society. Let me put it this way. One answer I can give you what is engineering. Let me put it in a different way. What is the difference between science and engineering? Science is explaining the world as it is. Engineering is changing the world to what we want it to be. So, simple example from my field. Uh, if you go to a forest and you are interested to know how tall the trees are, how wide the trees are, how old they are, etc. That is science. If you want to cut down the forest and we do this, so that's an example. If you want to cut down the forest and build a building so that you can live in it, that is engineering. So engineering is changing the world in order to meet some societal requirements. Science is explaining the world as it is. I think that's a good way to explain it. That was a wonderful way to put it, very short and very apt. Uh, now, uh, would you like to give our audience some insights of the foundation program? Because that is one thing which makes IIT Gandhinagar really stand apart from all the other leading technological institutes. Sure. So, the foundation program in IIT Gandhinagar, for those who haven't been through it, so it is a program that happens before the semester starts. So, we it's a four-week program right now. So, we get all the first-year students and they are taken through a variety of different events, different sort of sessions which are not academic in nature. So there's no math, physics, chemistry in any of them. We, the main aim of the foundation program is to inculcate a spirit of teamwork, punctuality, of enthusiasm, of physical fitness. So basically everything you were not able to do during the JE preparation years, during the coaching years, the foundation program hopes to rekindle that spirit in you. I think guess the overall aim of the foundation program is to remind you that you're not just a MCQ solving machine as a student. You are a person, a person with a personality, a person with interests. For many, those interests have been sort of suppressed for some time, and not necessarily in a good way. And now the aim of the foundation program is before you get into academics again, why don't you take some time to rekindle those interests? The ultimate hope being that once the semester starts and once classes etc. begin, you will then find time to pursue those interests in addition to your academic goals. So at IIT Gandhinagar, we believe both academics and non-academic activities are equally important for your growth as an individual. The foundation program tries to help you learn to have a balance of interests of both. Uh, as a person who had an FP experience just a year ago, I can uh, definitely say that everything you said about FP was totally true because I, as a person, am very interested towards various sorts of art, literature, and history. But in the in my four years of uh, JE examination preparation, I had to give up on all of it to get into this IIT. But I felt really happy that I could regain my interest in all of those fields as a part of the FP. And as you rightly pointed out, after giving JE examinations, a student feels himself as an MCQ solving robot which is not the case because when you're preparing for JE, you don't know what's happening in the outside world. You don't know who married to someone else. You don't know ki World Cup chal hai, T20 chal hai. You don't know IPL mein kaun jeeta. You don't know which Bollywood movie has came out. But jaise advance finishes, you are suddenly put up fresh into a new world. You need to come out of your bio bubble. You need to come out of the personal space that you created for yourself. So uh, FP is 
one of the best things that helps you to break your ice with other partners and as you rightly pointed out teamwork so uh, how do you think fp prepares the first year students to face the real world it's related to your first question what is engineering the difference between the real world and mcqs is that the real world doesn't have options that you can choose from right it to solve real problems of course you need a mathematical basis you need to be good at engineering but you also need to be creative you need to be able to work with other people not all of whom will be engineers so mcqs are useful for maths they're not useful for the real world so one way foundation program helps you not just in your non academic pursuits but even in your academic pursuits is to develop creativity and skills that you actually need in real life again you need to know your basics if you don't know how to do your basic engineering you're in trouble anyway but just being good at your academics is not good enough in real life fp helps you at least get an interest in those things of course it's four weeks so it's not going to cover everything it at least helps kindle an interest in those things which you won't learn in class but you will need probably as equally if not more importantly than what as you would learn in class in the future uh, i really loved how you put the analogy of an engineering and fp so uh, as i mentioned before during the two years or four years of j preparation students really don't know what to do after they come out of that phase so what do's and don'ts would you suggest for a first year student who will be coming to iit gandhi nagar or any other college so i was also a btech student once uh, at iit roorkee and i remember i made a lot of mistakes so in hindsight i can share some of those uh, one mistake is don't focus too much on academics but don't ignore it either so one common question is is cpi important the answer is it can be important it can be unimportant if it's very high it might not really matter much unless you're aiming for certain awards if it's very low it can become a problem so first thing is don't let your academics slip yeah i'm not the second part of it is don't focus only on academics so don't let it slip in either direction on the other side there are a lot of opportunities that an iit gives you many would ask what is the difference between iit and just any other college the difference is in the opportunities they give you but then those opportunities only mean something if you do something with them if you don't do anything with them you might as well not have come here in the first place so to first year students i would say of course don't drop your drop the ball on your academics keep make sure your cpi is a relatively decent value you don't have to be the highest in class try not to be the lowest in class though but at the same time spend your time to explore new interests try to become good at something besides what you're learning in class and i really emphasize that it's very important to be good at something there there's too many mediocre people in the world if you want to be a leader in the world you can't be mediocre right so whether it's academic or non academic pursuits it's not just you should pursue something you should try to be really good at it and that's how you will achieve some amount of success whatever that means in life um after the fp gets over and the students move to academics i think this is the time where suddenly they are they are totally blank as to how to pursue life they start feeling lost again after all those years of extreme hard work they are suddenly put into a new environment where they are not supposed to study there that is the time where fp comes in as a helper to bring them out of that zone but then suddenly as the fp ends and you once again get into the academics once again you have the loads of assignments and projects group projects that you'd never expected in your life you might have not done all of that in your school life as well once again the student is overwhelmed so what advice do you give students so that the transition from je to fp and again from fp to academics is very smooth so one thing this year i'm doing fp again and we have this feedback we got and we are changing a little bit so we are having some kind of a transition period in the end to help you get help the new first students at least understand what's coming up in the week after fp uh but besides that i'll say for everyone else do, well again it comes down to expectations you will have academics you are in an educational institution you're not going to have no studies at all you have to learn to manage your time you know the secret to getting a high cpi i'm giving away some trade secrets over here just do all your assignments don't copy or cheat anything anyway you shouldn't be doing that uh, for the honor code but do all your assignments on your own honestly that's 90% of the work that you need to do it doesn't take that much time secondly i would suggest you have to use your time optimally so for example if you're sleeping in class for what you're not sleeping at night because you're in a lot of activities then you're sleeping in class you're effectively not doing anything in those hours in class you're going to have to spend more time which you don't have to make up what you couldn't do in class so if you're in class take notes listen use the class time effectively that's how you will create more time so that you can pursue non academic things which are as important as academic things 
But time management is probably the single most important thing. If you don't learn anything else from your BTEC, learn time management. It's a very useful skill to have. Uh, uh, as all the activities that are budding on the campus may be the cultural clubs or our sports complex or even activities that are related to technology and engineering, I can definitely say that there's no time for us to sleep at night if you really want to be an active student. So definitely time management plays a very important role. But in spite of all of this, since a BTEC engineering uh, journey is not smooth, it's not uh, monotonous, there are lots of ups and downs. So if a student feels lost during his journey, are there any facilities available on the campus wherein he can seek, he or she can seek help from? Yes, it's a great question. So on two things, one on academics and non-academics. So academic for academics, every student has a faculty advisor. Right? Every batch has a faculty advisor. I'm faculty advisor for 2023 civil engineering batch, for example. If you're struggling with academics, if you're having trouble with classes, the first person you should come to is your academic advisors. They're really meant for more than just checking off your courses on the list. You can talk to them on academic struggles. Above that, there are some other levels, academics, which can help you. On non-academics, we have a very good counseling and well, mental health and wellness cell on campus. You should reach out to them. One issue which I see is people consider well, mental health as something not worth talking about. That's not true. If you're facing issues in terms of health, mental health or physical health, it's, it's a problem which, with a solution. You need to go to an expert who has a solution. So whether it's the counseling cell, whether it's other wellness initiatives on campus, there are many options for students who are struggling, both academically and non-academically, to help you get together. The worst thing you can do is to kind of cocoon yourself into your own world and try not to reach out for help. You reach out for help, there's plenty of help over here. That was a really in insightful thing that you pointed out. And other than the facilities provided by the college administration, I think the campus life here is very buzzing around with a lot of activities like Blitzkron, which is our cultural fest, or the TEDx, which has a lot of insightful talks, or maybe Amal Thya, which is our tech summit, and the cultural clubs and all of that. So with uh, all of these events are totally student run, which gives us an opportunity of uh, going out into the world and uh, having a conversation with people who might be several years older than us but having a very professional uh, experience. So how do you think that uh, these events are helping students in their holistic development and personality growth? I said tremendously. Your education is thoroughly incomplete if all you did was do assignments and exams at IIT. At least half your time, it, well it depends if the exams are there or not, but uh, at least half your time should be spent on the various activities you talked about because at the end of the day when you go into real life you have to deal with people. As I said, so first thing after JE, life is not an MCQ and engineering is definitely not MCQ. But after college also life is not about exams etc or exams or assignments. You have to learn to deal with people, you have to learn, so what does it mean to deal with people? It means understanding what do they want. When they're saying they have something, some issue, understanding what they need, understanding how you can work together to get, to get a favorable result for, for both of you. These are things which are not going to, I don't think it's possible to teach this in class. I'm sure some courses of like these exist somewhere, but I don't think these can be taught in class. Through participating in all these activities, you learn skills which are very helpful in life, but you basically can't learn in class. And that's why I said, if you don't participate in any of these, I'm not saying participate in everything because then you really won't sleep. So don't participate in everything, but if you don't participate in anything, your education is really incomplete. It goes back to what I said on opportunity. When you come to an IIT, you have these opportunities. If you choose not to use the opportunities, why are you even here? Very rightly pointed that an IIT is a place where there are thousands of opportunities to interact with people, to come out of your comfort zone. Um, as a person, when I came here, I was not very open to communicating with all sorts of people. But then when you see your classmates, your roommates, your batchmates coming from totally different cultures than yours, and you have to mingle with all of them because you can't live close in a room for 24 hours a day. So I think IIT is the best place, not just for engineering, but rather more for personal development. Um, so yeah, that is all from my side. Is there anything else you would like to share with the students? Well, I guess just on this thing on opportunity, what I said. So many students will be coming in, and I know because I'm in civil engineering, so I'm sure many of the students are waiting to ask this question. What if I don't get computer science or some other branch? Let me put it this way. If you are good, opportunities will open up for you. Your branch does not decide your life, but your talents and your dedication and your, the extent to which you have expertise in something, that decides your life. So whatever branch you get, don't cry over it and don't be depressed over it. Understand that firstly, you have to be good at something. That something might be programming, something might be civil engineering, it might be art or it might be sports, whatever. 
make sure at the end of four years you are good at something that something is what will decide your life it may be related to your branch it may not be related to your branch but if you spend all your time being depressed about what branch you got out out of what is after all a very probabilistic process this counseling etc there's a lot of randomness in it if you are depressed about it for four years you're going to be missing out on a lot of opportunities and last thing which i'll say because this is my personal experience so you're going to come here you're going to be spending four years over here in an iit a lot of your friends probably didn't get into an iit and you're probably proud of the fact that you did and they didn't keep in mind life doesn't stop you spend four years here you're completely cut off from the world except the iit world after four years the same people who did not get into an iit are back in the job market with you competition goes on in life you were good when you wrote je you managed to clear iit majority of people who did clear je majority of people didn't manage to clear it those people haven't disappeared from your life they are still competing after four years it will be seen who did more in those four years you or them that's where the difference comes in whether you took opportunities or whether you just stood still in time uh definitely agree to it because after all whatever matters is your skill uh if a person who did not clear je develops more skill set in the four years where you spent uh, crying over oh i got this branch oh i couldn't get what i wanted then definitely that person is going to be more successful than you in spite of you getting into an iit and getting a bunch more opportunities than he did so uh, thank you so much professor sain for sharing all these valuable insights and guiding our upcoming batch you have uh, since the past two years you have been an fp coordinator and a wonderful guide to the students who have just stepped into the fresh new world we hope that by this episode we have somewhat assisted the upcoming batch and we would like to tell the students all the best for the journey that lies in front of you je advanced examinations is not the end of the life it's just the beginning you are still to step into a thousands of more opportunities in front of you and uh, best wishes and have a wonderful college life yeah thank you